like just like maybe five five to ten years ago um, you didn't see anybody out in the streets evangelizing um, today it's a bit different we, we, God is raising up an army Amen. and the army is, is you <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I remember um, just being so um, on fire uh, when I got born again I started praying, started reading the Bible and once I understood um, the reality of eternity um, the reality of heaven and hell but the reality that the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ I came to the conclusion that the um, the, um, the purpose of my life is just to win as many souls as possible. <laughs> so I started going out into the streets. Um, I even started uh, feeding the homeless. Uh, uh, I would uh, go to the grocery store, get sandwiches, get some ham, get some cookies. Um, we make like a bunch of uh, lunch boxes Donc on des, des boîtes à lunch. and uh, go out and then and then hand them out at Atwater, McGill, where there was a whole lot of homeless people. And uh, today we have an army of uh, soldiers of Christ that are going out feeding the homeless. Brother Matsir, Brother Stefan, who are leading it. Amen. <laughs> doing a wonderful job for the Lord and uh, I also remember going into the hospitals by myself uh, because the Bible says that believers shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover and if the word of God is true then why not go into the hospitals where there are sick people I remember uh, when they were building the hospital near my place and I would tell myself I can't wait for that hospital to be finished because I'm going to go in and empty that hospital <laughs> and uh, as soon as it was open I started going into the emergency room started laying hands on the sick and God began to use me and uh, little by little people started joining me and at some point every Sunday we would meet up and we would all go into the hospitals and sometimes we were like 15, 20 people that would meet up just to go and pray for the sick at the hospitals and I didn't have the same faith as uh, Brother Wayne <laughs> I, I've gotten kicked out of hospitals multiple, multiple times <laughs> um, I even had a lawyer come to my door with a document <laughs> they, they found my social media <laughs> they, they labeled me as a faith healer <laughs> <laughs> and they basically threatened to, to sue me if I continued. <laughs> but with this army of um, brothers and sisters who would go into the hospitals, this is the people with whom we started this church. And so, what I wanted to share with you guys today <laughs> is the vision of our church. <laughs> Um, because we want our vision to be aligned with God's vision. And God's vision has been the same from the beginning. His vision is the salvation of humanity. Amen. Jesus came on this earth with a vision. He died on the cross to accomplish this vision. He started a church to fulfill this vision. And he said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. 
Il a dit que les portes de l'enfer ne reviendront point contre l'église. So he did not come to establish a religion. Il n'est pas venu pour établir une religion. He started. He came to start a movement. Il est venu pour commencer un mouvement. A missionary movement. Un, un mouvement missionnaire. To fulfill his vision. Pour euh, accomplir cette vision. Uh, the apostle John saw a vision. Donc l'apôtre Jean a vu cette vision. That God showed him. Que Dieu lui a montré. And he saw a great multitude of people. Il a vu une, beaucoup de personnes. Millions and millions and millions of people. Des millions et des millions de personnes. Maybe even billions. Peut-être même des millions. From, des every, millions. from all different nationalities. De plein de nationalités différentes. From every tribe, every, every tongue. De toute tribu, de toute langue. They were all worshiping before the throne. Et ils adoraient devant le trône. And that is God's vision. Et ça, la de Dieu. That millions and billions of people would worship before the throne. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish. La Bible dit que Dieu ne veut que ne, ne but that all come to repentance. Mais que tous à la the heart of God is that everyone would get saved. Le de Dieu, que tous sauvés. And that is the vision. Et ça, la vision. And that is our vision. Ça, notre vision. The salvation of souls. La, le salut des âmes. We have to keep that vision. On doit garder cette vision. Because sometimes it's easy to lose that vision. Parce que des fois, facile de perdre cette vision. It's easy to get comfortable. Facile de, 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 de comfortable. It's easy to become religious. Facile de devenir religieux. And if us having a place to gather is going to cause us to become religious, Et si le fait place pour se rassembler va faire en sorte qu'on devienne religieux or cause us to become comfortable ou faire en sorte qu'on devienne confortable I would rather not have this place donc je préférais ne pas avoir cette place I'd rather be out in the harvest je préférais être dehors dans la moisson winning souls for Jesus gagner des âmes pour Jésus and so I would like to share with you guys um, what is our vision donc j'aimerais partager avec vous quelle est notre vision because Jesus gave us a strategy parce que Jésus nous a donné une stratégie He said, go and make disciples. Il a dit, Allez, faites des Preach the gospel to every creature. À toute la and make disciples of all nations. Il fait des de toutes les nations. And so, whenever we have a vision, Donc, euh, quand on a une vision, there are two things that we have to remember. Deux choses doit se and this is uh, something I have shared with before. Donc, quelque chose que déjà you got to remember the greatest commandment. Donc, tu dois te du plus grand commandement and the great commission. La grande commission. So, what is the greatest commandment? Donc, quoi la, le grand commandement? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And what is the second greatest commandment? Et quoi le plus grand command, le deuxième plus grand commandement? Love your neighbor as yourself. And what is the great commission? Make disciples of all nations. Yeah. So this is the heart of our vision. Donc ça, le cœur de notre vision. We want to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. On veut aimer Dieu avec tout notre cœur, notre âme, notre force. We want to love our neighbor as ourselves. On veut aimer notre voisin comme nous-mêmes. And we want to uh, make disciples of all nations. Et on veut faire des disciples des nations des disciples. This is our vision. Ça, est notre vision. And this is not a step-by-step -step process. Et ça, c'est pas un étape pas un processus étape par étape. So as you can see, this is a, um, um, it's a circle that continues. Donc, comme vous pouvez voir, ça, un cercle qui continue. I don't know how to explain it. But they're all connected. Mais est, tout est connecté. Right. To love God is to love your neighbor. Donc, Dieu, ton to love your neighbor is to love God. Aimer ton prochain, aimer Dieu. To love your neighbor is to make disciples. To make disciples is to love God. <laughs> to love God is to make disciples. <laughs> so that's the best way I could explain it. <laughs> right? Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. And he said, whatever you do to the least of these, you do unto me. 
Jésus a dit, euh, ce que tu fais, au plus petit de, de ceci, tu le fais à moi. Yeah, so it's not like we have to focus on one first, the second after, and then the third after, amen? C'est pas comme ça on doit se, euh, se focuser sur un en premier, puis après le deuxième. We have, to, we have to focus on all three at the same time, because they're all connected together. On doit se concentrer sur les trois en même temps, parce qu'ils sont tous connectés. So we cannot have one without the other. On peut pas avoir un sans l'autre. Because if you're not making disciples, you're not loving God. If you're not loving your neighbor, you're not loving God. The Bible says that how can you say you love God when you hate your brother who you can see? How can you say you love God who you cannot see? Yeah. So, because of um, lack of time, um, I'm going to focus today on making disciples. Yeah, because a lot of uh, traditional churches, there, um, it's, it could become a, it be a weakness to make disciples. And we want to keep the DNA of preaching the gospel and making disciples. And so, I'm going to give you guys some practical steps. <clears throat> and these are things that I have shared with you already. Many of you guys are already familiar with it. So how are we going to practically make disciples? Because we often say we got to go preach the gospel and make disciples. But what are some step-by-step uh, strategies or step-by-step -step things that we could do in order to accomplish this mission. <clears throat> so, the first thing I will share is access ministries. So, when we go out and share the gospel, one of the most effective ways to touch people is by serving them. Is by loving them. For example, feeding the homeless. Or praying for the sick. Right? Jesus gave us a strategy to preach the gospel. He said, heal the sick. And then preach the gospel. And we have to do both. We have to love them practically, <laughs> and we got to share the gospel. Because a lot of people were focused are focused only on preaching the gospel, but they don't do any acts of love or kindness. On, on the other hand, some people are focused only on acts of love and kindness. And yet they don't preach the gospel. Uh, for example, the Salvation Army. You know, the Salvation Army actually originated as an actual Salvation Army. <laughs> yeah. If you guys know the history of William Booth, the, the founder of the Salvation Army, he was a street preacher. <laughs> he would go out into the darkest places of London and preach the gospel. And he would also feed the homeless. And, and he started a literal salvation army. They would go, go out into the streets, they would uh, play music with trumpets. They would gather a crowd and they would preach the gospel. And they would target the homeless, they would target the prostitutes. And he would help them uh, practically. And through this ministry, hundreds and thousands of people gave their lives to the Lord. 
Et à travers mm -hmm. ce, ce ministère, il y a plusieurs personnes qui ont le nom de Seigneur. But today, the Salvation Army doesn't have that same impact. Mais aujourd'hui, mm -hmm. l'armée du salut n'a plus cet impact. They are no longer known as a movement that is preaching the gospel. C'est plus, ils sont plus connus comme un mouvement qui prêche l'évangile. But they are, but they are known for. Um, Helping the people in need, which is very good, what they're doing. Yeah. But my point is that we need to do both. Amen. So we need to show, serve the people. And also we could, a, a very practical and easy way to serve people is by simply offering, offering them prayer. Pour les gens, de leur la right. I, I like to, when I go out into the streets, I simply ask people, is there anything that I can pray for you for? And if they have pain or sickness, we pray for them and God heals them. And we share the gospel to them. Et on avec eux. Um, second thing I want to share, that, and, and these things are tools that you could use. Et la deuxième chose que je veux partager, puis ça, c'est des outils que tu peux yeah, utiliser. That anybody could do. Que, peu importe. Um, like, like Brother Wayne said, you could share your testimony. Comme Frère Wayne a dit, tu peux partager ton témoignage. Many of you guys know about the 15 second testimony that we, we uh, shared with you guys. Donc plusieurs euh, connaissent les témoignages en 15 secondes qu'on a partagé. Yeah. So I'm not going to go over how you can share your testimony in 15 seconds. Donc, euh, je vais pas vous dire comment vous pouvez partager votre témoignage en 15 secondes. Uh, because we don't have uh, enough time. Parce qu'on n'a pas assez de temps. Um, but some of you guys already know. Mais certains d'entre vous savent déjà. Uh, but if you guys do want to learn how to share your testimony in 15 seconds, you could come see me or someone who, who knows how to do it. Donc, euh, si vous voulez apprendre comment faire ça, vous pouvez venir me voir ou quelqu'un qui sait comment faire. And we'll be more than happy to, to help you with that. Et on serait plus que content de vous aider avec ça. Um, so, so once again, these are practical steps on how we could make disciples. Uh, there's a three-circle gospel presentation. Um, so many of you guys know this one as well. And so this is a, a gospel presentation that anybody could do. You don't have to be an anointed evangelist to do it. Yeah. And once again, um, if you guys want to learn how to do it, uh, you could ask around. Many of you already know how to do it, or you could come see me. I'd be happy to sit down with you to help you with these strategies. Now, the third thing I want to share with you guys is something that is very important that I would love for you guys to put into practice. And this is the discovery group. So, for those of you guys who come on Sundays, we do discovery groups very often um, at my place where we divide into groups and we do discovery groups. So, discovery groups is a discipleship strategy that anybody could do. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a scholar. Uh, you don't have to know a lot about the Bible. All you have to do is know the seven questions and do a Bible study. And this is a strategy that we can use with unbelievers as well. Or, or people that are spiritually hungry. And this is a strategy that will help us to make disciples and to multiply. Because once again, we want to have a go into the harvest mentality rather than a come to church mentality. Because the responsibility of making disciples is for every disciple of Jesus. It's not just for the pastor. Right? It's not just invite people to church so that the pastor could disciple everybody. <laughs> Even Jesus only discipled 12 people. And then he instructed his disciples to disciple others. So every single one of you are called to make disciples. So 
we have to be honest with ourselves. Donc on doit être honnête avec nous-mêmes. How many of us are making disciples? Combien d'entre nous font des disciples? You gotta ask yourself that question. On doit se poser cette question. Are you fulfilling God's vision? Est-ce que tu accomplis la vision de Dieu? Are you fulfilling the Great Commission? Est-ce que tu accomplis la Grande Commission? Are you sharing the gospel? Est-ce que tu partages l'évangile? Are you making disciples? Est-ce que tu fais des disciples? These are tools that you can use to make disciples. Ça c'est des outils que tu peux utiliser pour faire des disciples. You can share your testimony. You can share the gospel. Tu peux share ton and you can invite you can invite people to start a discovery group you can open your home and invite people to read the Bible with you and once again if if you guys are not so familiar with how to do these I would be more than happy to sit down with you and to help you with that. Yeah, and this is a way that we could also multiply churches. Because yes, we are in a building right now. But if we want to truly multiply and to win the city, we need to multiply house churches. We need to be meeting in homes. We need to gain access into families. And that's how we will multiply and that's how we will spread out in the city. So my challenge to each and every one of you in 2023 pour chacun d'entre vous en 2023. My challenge is for you to make disciples. Mon défi c'est que vous fassiez des disciples. Share the gospel. Partager l'évangile. You could and start a discovery group. Et commencer un groupe de découverte. Is that a reasonable challenge? Est-ce que c'est un défi raisonnable? For for 2023. Pour 2023. To start a discovery group. De commencer un groupe de découverte. And begin to make disciples. And then you could train your disciples to do the same exact thing. And then we can multiply all over the city. All over the province. All over the nations. Because if, if, if imagine every single person in this room right now. Started a discovery group. With let's say five people in your discovery group. Avec cinq personnes dans le groupe. Let's say let's say we all open our homes, or mm. or you 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 start a discovery group uh, in a coffee shop or in somebody else's home. Disons qu'on quand on ouvre notre maison, vous commencez un groupe de découverte dans la maison de quelqu'un ou dans un dans un café. Yeah, and then we multiply by how much? Five. <laughs> Et quand c'est quand on multiplie par cinq. And that that's exponential growth. Yeah, and that's how we will bring revival in Montreal. So, I'm gonna uh, finish with um, challenging you with commitments for 2023. Yeah. My first challenge to you which goes um, along with loving God and loving your neighbor. My first challenge is to give generously. Right? I wasn't able to go over the importance of giving sacrificially. But we know that a healthy church is a church that is willing to love one another. Like we see in the book of Acts, they have sold their possessions and they gave to the church. Yeah. For you guys who, who have been me, with me for a while, uh, we have not taken offerings weekly for nearly three years. Pour ceux qui s'appellent longtemps que vous êtes avec moi, on n'a pas pris des offrandes mm -hmm. euh, hebdomadaires pendant au moins trois ans. Yeah. The only time we took offering was when the, we had somebody in need. Les seules fois qu'on a pris des offrandes, c'est si on avait quelqu'un dans le besoin. Or uh, to uh, invest in a mission trip. Ou in investir dans une mission 
dans une, un voyage missionnaire. Right. But other than that, we did not ask any money. Mais autrement, on n'a pas demandé pour de l'argent. But I trust that you all know that giving is biblical. Amen. Amen. J'ai confiance que vous savez que donner c'est biblique. And now we do have a place that we are, we are um, we're, that we're, we have up to meet. Donc maintenant, on a une place pour se rassembler. And Brother Wayne, he graciously offered this place for us. Donc, euh, Frère Wayne nous a gracieusement offert cette place. But we will begin to take offering to donate to this ministry. Mais on va commencer à prendre des offrandes pour donner à ce ministère. Mm -hmm. And this ministry is a ministry that helps the homeless, they help the poor. Amen. Amen. So my challenge for you guys in 2023 is to be willing to give generously. Right. We, we will begin taking offerings every Sunday. Is, is that okay with everyone? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I always said, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I always said uh, that we were only going to begin taking offerings weekly um, as soon as we get a building. So, yeah. so for three years we've been operating as a house church. And so now it is, it is time. And it's more blessed to give than to receive. Mm -hmm. I'm not a, a prosperity preacher. <laughs> But prosperity is not a bad word. There, there is prosperity in the gospel. <laughs> you reap what you sow. So he who sows little will reap little. He who sows much will reap much. Amen. So it's a it's a blessing to give. Amen. Amen. So that is my challenge for you to, in 2023 is to give generously. So whether you do it on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, um, God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Yeah. So my second uh, challenge for you that we cannot neglect is to spend time with the Lord every day. Now this is not a once a week thing. This is an everyday thing. You know, um, it's important that we keep our oh, love for God. I thought it was still there. <laughs> yeah. By spending time with Him. Yeah, the more you spend time with someone, the more you fall in love with that person. So, my challenge for you today is to spend time with the Lord every day. In prayer and in the word. So I'm not going to tell you guys how long to spend. You know, I used to say one hour minimum, but I know everybody is at different levels. Even if you commit to read one chapter today, one chapter per day, Read one chapter per day. <coughs> so that's the second commitment is to spend time with the Lord. <coughs> Develop a close relationship with God. <coughs> the third commitment that I, um, or challenge that I have for you <coughs> is to evangelize. <coughs> right? Share your testimony. Share the gospel. Every week. At least once a week. So either you could commit to once a week going out into the streets with our team to evangelize. Or you, or you could evangelize at least one person per week, someone in your life. But my challenge is for you to evangelize at least once per week. My fourth challenge for you 
Mon quatrième challenge pour toi is to participate in a discovery group. De participer à un groupe découverte. One of the benefits of house churches un des un des bénéfices de, des églises maison, or smaller gatherings ou des, euh, rassemblements plus petits, is developing a close intimate relationship with each other de développer une, une relation intime avec les uns les autres, caring for one another de, de, de se soucier des uns pour les autres, knowing each other's needs de, se, de connaître les besoins des autres and loving one another et de s'aimer les uns les autres right this goes back to um, the importance of loving our neighbor as ourselves et ça, ça revient à l'importance de aimer nos voisins comme nous. Jesus said, "This is how they will know that you are my disciples is by your love for one another." So, in order for us to love one another, we need to spend time with one another. Because we are a family. Um, in a big church setting like this, one of the challenges is that you're not able to develop close relationship with one another. Dans un cadre d'une grande église, c'est qu'on n'est pas capable de développer des relations avec les uns et les autres. A lot of times how it works is that we come to church, we worship, we listen to the word, and then when church is over, everybody goes home, and we don't talk to each other throughout the week. Donc euh, plusieurs fois, si on va à l'église, on adore, mm. on écoute la parole, puis euh, on ne se parle pas les uns les autres. And we don't, we don't want that to happen to et us. Et on ne veut pas yeah? que ça arrive. Mm. And so, I would like to challenge you guys to... Participate in the one of the discovery groups that we have throughout the week. Right. So uh, at my place, we have we meet on Tuesdays and on Thursdays. Donc chez moi, on se rencontre les mardis et les jeudis. I know other people also. You may have discovery groups that are going on in your homes. Donc je sais que d'autres personnes vous avez des groupes découvertes qui faites chez vous. Or you could start your own discovery group and meet throughout the week. Ou vous pouvez commencer vos propres découvertes. But I would like to challenge you to participate in at least one discovery group per week. All right, and my final challenge for you for 2023. I mentioned it already. Start your own discovery group. Share the gospel. Find a person of peace. And begin to do discovery Bible studies with that person or with um, with anybody. Yeah. And if you guys put this challenge that I'm giving to you into practice in 2023, then we will be fulfilling God's vision. On va être en train d'accomplir la vision de Dieu. And we will see revival. Et on va voir un réveil. Right? So, I was not able to give you, um, like, specific or detailed training on how to do all of this. Donc, j'ai pas pu vous donner euh, une formation détaillée pour comment faire tout ça. Um, but, many, but many of you I, um, have already been trained in doing it. Mais plusieurs d'entre vous avez déjà été formés pour... But for those of you who are maybe not yet familiar, uh, once again, um, I'll be more than happy to sit down with you to train you on how to do it, um, or you could speak with a brother or sister who is familiar with uh, with these uh, strategies. All right. So we only have six minutes. And so, like I said, um, we're going to begin to be taking offerings. So today we're also taking an offering. Um, I forgot to bring the offering box, but um, you guys can do an e-transfer to the email. Montrefuge-Montréal. Um, yeah, or if you, you um, want to give cash, you could uh, come see me after. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of our service today. I don't know if um, anyone had any announcements.